Okay, uh, perfect problem one solutions for math 95. We're given this ridiculous mess of symbols and numbers and letters and asked to simplify it. And in fact, it's going to simplify really nicely. The answer is whatever number this guy whose nickname was The Answer wore when he played for the Philadelphia 76ers. The guy whose nickname was The Answer is Allen Iverson, one of the more fun basketball players to watch. Um, and he wore number three. So what that means is I'm going to simplify the hell out of this thing. And my final answer should be, if I do everything exactly right, the number three. Hard to imagine at this point, but let's work on it. I think it's easiest to kind of break it down into pieces. The top here, I got one plus x squared minus three x divided by x squared minus 2x minus 3. I would prefer to write this all as one term, one fraction. It's hard to do. Um, but I can do it if instead of viewing this as 1, I view it as 1 divided by 1. And now I think about what I do when I'm trying to add two fractions together. If you're trying to add two fractions together, you need a common denominator. Multiply the top and the bottom here by x squared minus 2x minus 3. And what I will get... are two fractions that have a common denominator. I can deal with that. I can add up two fractions that have a common denominator. All I gotta do is add up the numerators. So x squared plus x squared gives me two x squared. Minus two x plus minus three x gives me minus five x. And then I have a negative three. And then just write the denominator one time, x squared minus two x minus three. The top here, equals this. Um, hopefully this will factor. Let's see, I need two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to negative 2. Um, if I'm going to multiply to negative 3, I either have 1 and negative 3 or negative 1 and positive 3. But only 1 and negative 3 will also add up to negative 2. What I'm saying is this factors into x plus 1 and x minus 3. What about this guy? I better do that off to the side. Let's try to factor 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. I got to do this off to the side because this is the longer one. This is when the leading coefficient is not a 1. This is a three-step process. First step, find two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. Let's see, negative 6 and positive 1 will do. And you take those two numbers, negative 6 and positive 1, and you replace the coefficient on the x term with those two numbers. What you now have are four terms, so you can factor by grouping. The greatest common factor in this first group is 2x. Leaves me with x minus 3. I want to be left with x minus 3 over here. I have to pull out something, so let's just pull out a positive 1 kind of as a placeholder, because I already have an x minus 3 over here. What I now have are two terms. They both have an x minus 3 in them. If I factor out this x minus 3 and this x minus 3, I'm left with just 2x plus 1. This is what goes up here. Oh, and look at that. x minus 3 and x minus 3, those will cancel out. And I'll get a simpler answer. You could say that I left room because I knew this was going to happen. I'll get 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. The top is equal to this. That's good, but we're nowhere near done. Now we gotta simplify the bottom here. Okay. So on the bottom, I got three terms. Ugh. One over three x plus 12, plus two x over three x plus three, plus one over x squared plus 5x plus 4. Damn, adding together three terms, that's not going to be very fun. What I would need would be a common denominator. It's very hard to look at these and tell what the least common denominator is, but maybe if I factor the bottom for all three, I'll be able to tell. For the first one, not a whole lot you can do here. Um, first look for a greatest common factor. Uh, three goes into both of these terms, so I can pull out that three 
and I'd be left with x plus 4. In fact, that's it. That's all you can do. You're factoring the bottom here. That's as far as you can go. All right, what about the next one? 3x plus 3. Again, let's look for a greatest common factor. Ah, 3 works again. And this time, if I factor out a 3, I'm left with x plus 1. Okay, what about the third one? Got to factor out the bottom. x squared plus 5x plus 4. Let's see, the leading coefficient is a 1. It's a quadratic trinomial, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 5. I'll take those two numbers, and I'll write them here and here, and I'll be done factoring. Let's see, add to 5, multiply to 4. I think positive 4 and positive 1 will do the trick. So I'll write those there. Note that I got a 3 here and a 3 here, but no 3 here. I got an x plus 4 here and an x plus 4 here, but no x plus 4 here. I got an x plus 1 here and an x plus 1 here, but no x plus 1 here. My least common denominator is 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1. 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1. However, each of these terms are missing something. To make this one have that denominator, I have to multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 1. 1 times x plus 1 would give me x plus 1. To make this term have that common denominator, I'll have to multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 4. What that would give me is 2x times x plus 4 on the top, and then this common denominator on the bottom. And finally, to get this one to be 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1, I'm missing a 3. Multiply the top and the bottom by 3. That'll give me the bottom is this common denominator. And up top, it'll give me 1 times 3, which is just equal to 3. The bottom, which is an absolute mess, 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1. Um, the top, I guess, is even worse. Right? We want to combine like terms up top, but we can't do it because of these parentheses. So let's get rid of those parentheses. I take this 2x and I can distribute it through. That gives me 2x squared plus 8x. I get the plus 3. Now if I combine like terms, I get 2x squared. I got 8x plus 1 more x gives me 9x. I got 1 and 3 gives me 4. I get here. I wonder if I can simplify that. It would be nice if I could simplify that. If I can simplify to figure out if I can simplify that, I'd have to factor out the top. Factoring out the top, I'm gonna do that out to the side. It's always bad news when I do it out to the side. That means it's not easy. 2x squared plus 9x plus 4. This is another one of those cases where the leading coefficient is not a 1. You might be able to jump straight to the final answer like this using a guess and check method, but I'm gonna illustrate a method that does not rely upon that. Step one, find two numbers that multiply to 8 and that add to 9. See, positive 8 and positive 1 would do it. So I got replace the 9x with 8x and 1x. Now factor by grouping. I got 2x in common in these first two terms. And if I factor that out, I'd be left with x plus 4. I want to be left with x plus 4 here. Again, coincidentally, I already had an x plus 4, so just factor out a plus 1 as a placeholder. Now I got two terms that both have an x plus 4 in them, so I get here. What I'm saying is the top is really x plus 4 times 2x plus 1, and the bottom is, maybe that should have been in green, whatever, 3x plus 4 x plus 1. Oh, nice. There's an x plus 4 in the top and the bottom. Cancel those out. You get 2x plus 1 over 3 times x plus 1. Okay, let's put this all together. This is the top. What color do I use? I don't know. Blue. Sure. So I already broke up a spot where I did the top, broke up a spot where I did the bottom. Now let's do both the top and the bottom. The top we figured out was 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. The bottom, we got it right here, it's 2x plus 1 divided by 3 times x plus 1. The way you divide fractions 
Kind of like multiplying fractions, except you have to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. It's a fancy way of saying take this thing on the bottom and flip it upside down. Instead of, I can't read my own writing. What is that? That's supposed to be 2x plus 1. I just left out a plus in there. Now it's especially hard to read. Let me try that again. 2x plus 1. How about that? There we go. Um, so flip this thing upside down. 3 times x plus 1 divided by 2x plus 1. This mess is equal to this. But look, now I got a 2x plus 1 on the top and the bottom. I can cancel those out. I got an x plus 1 on the top and the bottom. Those cancel out. And all that I'm left with is 3 divided by 1. In other words, 3. 3, the number that Allen Iverson wore. This ridiculous problem, way harder than anything I'd ever test you on, um, simplifies pretty nicely. Gives you a hell of a lot of practice on doing this stuff. If you can do this, you can more, you, this is way more than I'll ask you to do. But if this makes sense, it'll make what I ask you to do much easier. All right, I will end that here, mercifully.